Hi, I'm Dr. Cheryl Dunn, and I'm here to talk about depreciation of fixed assets. We're going to talk about three different methods today. The first method is called the straight line method. The second method we're going to talk about is the units of production. which is also sometimes called the activity method. And the third method is the double declining balance method. Or what is known as an accelerated depreciation method. For the straight line method, a formula for calculating the depreciation is our acquisition cost minus our salvage value. The salvage value here is also sometimes called the residual value. And it indicates the amount that we expect to be able to sell the asset for once we're done using it for our company's intended purpose. So, for example, if we were going to buy a delivery truck for $60,000 today and use it for five years, and we think at the end of five years we can sell that truck for $10,000, that would be our salvage or residual value. We divide that cost minus the salvage value by the useful life measured as time. So if we're calculating years worth, we'll divide it by years. If we're calculating months worth, we'll divide it by months and that type of thing. This idea of a cost minus the salvage value, that has a special name in our vocabulary. So let me just point that out. This is called the depreciable cost. This depreciable cost is the only amount that we want to be allocating across the periods of an asset's life, no matter which of the methods that we're using. In the straight line method, we build it right into the formula, so we're going to make sure that we don't depreciate more than the depreciable cost of the asset. <clears throat> the formula for the units of production or activity method, let me just draw a line here so I make sure I don't get them too close together and get you confused. Units of production method has the same basic formula in other words the depreciable cost divided by the life but this time the useful life is some type of a productive unit if it was a vehicle then it would be miles that we would be using as the basis for the depreciation if it's production equipment, we would use it as the number of units of product produced by that, pro by that equipment and that type of thing. And so you'll notice it's the same formula for both of these. It's just a different denominator. So if we're doing straight line, we're spreading that cost evenly across time with that, of that asset's life. With units of production, we're spreading that cost evenly over the life in units. So we're allocating the same amount of cost to each unit that's part of that asset's life, but it's not going to necessarily be evenly spread out over time. In, in fact, if it was evenly spread out over time, that would probably be an amazing coincidence that we produced exactly the same number of units with that equipment, or we drove that truck exactly the same number of miles in one year that we did the year before. Um, so it's going to be evenly allocated to the units that it's being used to produce, but not evenly through time. And then the double declining balance method is called an accelerated method because we're going to recognize higher depreciation expense in the early years of the asset's life than we are in the later years of the asset's life. Okay, the formula for that is going to be 2 divided by the life in time and then multiplied by the cost minus the accumulated 
depreciation. The accumulated depreciation represents the entire amount of depreciation expense that's been recognized on that asset to date from the beginning of its when it was acquired through the current date. All of those added together would represent accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account that reduces the asset account itself. So for example, if this was a piece of production equipment, we would have an asset account called equipment and then we would have a contra asset called accumulated depreciation in which all the depreciation of that equipment would be stored. We also have depreciation expense and that's what we're calculating here. Same thing here, that's what we're calculating. That depreciation expense is the amount of cost of that asset that we are allocating to one specific time period for that asset. And so that will get closed out at the end of each time period. And so it will only ever have one period's amount of depreciation in the expense account. We close it with our closing entries. It gets closed um, and so the balance ends up stored in accumulated depreciation. And the effect on the income statement goes into retained earnings as a decrease in retained earnings. Okay, so let's use an example. Let's say we have a truck. And let's say that this truck cost $24,000. Let's also say that this cost, <clears throat> let's also say that this truck has a residual value or a salvage value of $800. And let's say that it has a life expected to be five years. So in other words, we're going to buy this truck for $24,000 today. We expect at the end of five years we'll be able to turn around and sell it for $800. That means our depreciable cost is $23,200. Using the straight line method, that's our cost minus our salvage value, we would divide that by five years to get the annual depreciation. Expense. If we had that asset for less than a year, for example, in the year of acquisition or in the year of disposal, we would need to adjust that for however many months we actually had the asset. Assuming that we had it for a whole year, we would simply divide it in. We would get four $4,064 as our yearly depreciation expense. Okay, let's say we got that same asset, that same truck, and let's say that we expect the truck a total of 100,000 miles. We would then calculate the, light, the depreciation per mile as the cost minus the salvage value divided by the total miles. So we would take that 23,200, that's our cost minus the salvage value, our depreciable cost. We would divide that by 100,000 miles to get a cost of $1,000.
two cents per mile. Then we would need to know how many miles we actually drove it. So let's say in year one we drove um, let's say 20,000 miles. We would then multiply the 20,000 miles times 0 0.232 and that would give us 4640 as our depreciation expense for year one. If then in year two we drove 30,000 miles, then we would end up with 30,000 times 0.232 and that would give us 6960 as our year two depreciation expense. And we would keep recognizing each year until we reach the point where we dispose of the asset or fully depreciate it because once we recognize the full depreciable cost as expense, we can't recognize any additional expense for that asset. Okay, then let's look at double declining balance. Here we take two over the life, which in this case is five years, and we multiply that by cost minus accumulated depreciation. Notice in this formula we're not building in the salvage value. That means we have to be extra careful when we get toward the end to make sure that we don't over depreciate this asset. The only one that we're completely safe on is the straight line method because even this method builds it in, in in the rate per mile, but we have to make sure we don't depreciate more miles than we estimated the asset to be good for. Here, it's not built in anywhere in our formula, so we have to be super careful to make sure we don't over depreciate this asset. We're gonna take cost minus accumulated depreciation. This is the part of the formula that is going, is representing the declining balance. So it's this difference that's going to go down each year and it's going to start out at just the cost because the accumulated depreciation before you've taken any depreciation is zero. And so in the first year, we're going to take the 24000 that was our cost, and we're going to subtract zero as our accumulated depreciation. And so we're basically, this ends up being 40%. We're multiplying 40% times 24000 for the first year's depreciation which is going to give us $9,600 as year one depreciation expense. You'll notice that's quite a bit higher than we had in the other two methods, and that's what you would expect because it's an accelerated method. It's going to recognize more expense in the early years than it is in the later years. We would then go on to year two, we would say, okay, now we're taking 2 over 5 still, and we're multiplying it by the difference between the cost of 24000 and the 9600 that is in our accumulated depreciation account. So this is 14400 and if we multiply that by the 0 .4, 5760 as our year 2 depreciation expense. Okay, now we test it and we say, okay, what's the accumulated depreciation? 9,600 plus 5,760 gives us 15,360 in our accumulated depreciation. We need to continually be testing to make sure that this accumulated depreciation doesn't go above the 23,200 that we want to depreciate in total for the asset. If it goes above that, we can't take as much depreciation expense, so we have to ask ourselves before we make this entry. In this case, we're still below the 23200 so we can continue and go ahead and make this entry for our depreciation expense. For year three, then, we would take our same 2 over 5 or 0.4, and we would multiply it by the 24,000 
minus the accumulated depreciation, which we said is 25, or 15, 30, 60. If we take 24,000 minus the 15, 360, we get 8,640 as the balance, now that it's declined, times that 0.4. which is going to give us 3,456. We would then look and see if we add 3,456 to this accumulated depreciation that we already had, are we going to be um, over-depreciated? And in this case, we would be at 18,816. We're below the 23,200. So we're okay to take this depreciation expense for year three. For year four then, we would take 0.4 times the 24,000 minus the 18,816 that's now in our accumulated depreciation. That plus the 24,000 gives us 5,184 and when we multiply that by 0.4 we get 2,074 rounded to the nearest dollar. If we add 2,074 to our accumulated depreciation that would give us 20,890 that's still below the 23,200, so I can go ahead and take this as my year four depreciation expense. And then for year five, the final year, I would take 0.4 times my 24,000 minus 20,890. That would give me 3,110 times the 0.4 would give me 1,244. That's still not going to put me up to my full 23,200, so I would be okay to take that amount. Alternatively, if I've determined that my residual value was accurate, I may want to go ahead and depreciate the remaining balance that would get us to the 23200 in that year five. So hopefully this illustrates the theoretical differences between the straight line method, the units of production or activity method, and the double declining balance method of depreciation.